This is Ginger from My Sister Scrapper. Today I have a tutorial that I'm going to share with you. I had a lot of people ask about sharing the little project that I created using the Graphic 45 uh, typography paper collection. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. I've been crazy busy this summer traveling and teaching and I've just been having so much fun. So I'm sorry this is a little late, but anyway, that's what I'm going to share with you. And I'd show you the project, but I left it at Creative Chaos, which is where I taught the class. Uh, I left the project with them. So for this a tutorial you're going to need a paper some paper collection um, I was going to use a typography again but I don't have all the papers that I used in the original so I got my brand new graphic 45 winter wonderland so I thought well I'm just gonna use this for the tutorial so I will be using this and I will be using the 12 by 12 papers love this collection oh my goodness you have got to see it it's just gorgeous Anyway, I pulled out one of each one of the pages because you get three of the eight different designs. So I pulled out one of each of here and that's what I'm going to use to make the project. So for supplies, you will need obviously a uh, chipboard, cardstock, a paper trimmer, and some, did I say score tape already? <laughs> I think I did. And a ruler, scissors and some more adhesive that you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and put my mat down here just so I don't mess up my little paper here. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to give you the measurements for the covers. In here somewhere. All right, here we go. The covers measure, what do the covers measure? You can get this out of a piece of eight and a half by 11. They measure four and a half by six and a quarter. So that's gonna be your front and your back. And then the spine piece is gonna be one and a quarter by six and a quarter. So that's gonna be the covers. This is a real simple little booklet. It goes pretty fast. Um, it doesn't take a lot of supplies. You can use your scraps. It's a great way to use that. And I have showed already how to create the page style, but I had so many people ask to do a start to finish, so that's what I'm going to do with this. So, what you're going to need to wrap your chipboard is a piece that measures 8 and 1 quarter by 12. And what I did, um, this is how I like to wrap my chipboard is I take my piece of cardstock that I'm gonna wrap with, and again, it measures seven and three quarters, whoopsie, I lied, seven and three quarters by 12, and um, it's gonna be three quarters on this side with your score, and you're gonna rotate it once and score it at three quarters of an inch here as well. So again, you're gonna place it in here, and this piece measures seven and three quarters by 12. I'm gonna score it three quarters of an inch, turn it and score it at three quarters of an inch on two sides, okay? And the score line is just a guide so I can keep my chipboard straight when I go to place it down. So we're gonna put that down. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna take your chipboard and you wanna add your adhesive on the back side of each piece. And I went ahead and added score tape. I like to use the one inch um, for this, just because I can. <laughs> Uh, but you can use whatever adhesive you prefer. If you prefer the art glitter glue, the wet glue, um, whatever, you can use whatever you like. It Again, adhesive is a personal choice. So we're going to go ahead and, again, the key to score tape is you want to burnish it really, really well. So you're going to take your one cover piece, remove the tape backing. And using the corner here with your score lines where they intersect as a guide, go ahead and place your first piece of chipboard right up against that score line on the bottom and along the side. And press it down. So that's the first piece. The next piece we're going to add is the spine. And you can um, either do a couple of widths of your chipboard, you can just eyeball it, you can use your quarter inch tape. Um, I 
just eyeball it, but you get a good rule of thumb is your Tim Holtz ruler in between there. Oopsie, about added the wrong one. So then you're going to add your spine piece. Again, leaving a space between the chipboard pieces and using the score line as a guide. And stick it down. Then we're going to go ahead and add the last piece in the same way. So again, I'm just going to line that up and stick it down. And you should have pretty equal space. It's not quite three quarters of an inch, about five eighths, but mm, close enough. <laughs> So then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip this over and burnish again our score tape. And we're going to take our bone folder and the two sides that didn't get a score mark, we're just going to run our bone folder around the edge just to help break up the fibers in the paper so it'll wrap better. So Gonna fold it over like this just to get it trained and then we're gonna get and we're gonna wrap this now before I like to wrap it and before I cut my corners I like to add my score tape now you can use wet glue if you want but again I like to use score tape so I'm gonna run my score tape along the edge of my cardstock like this and you don't have to go all the way to the edge because we're going to trim the corners out so it should look like this again we're going to burnish our tape and again this isn't the only way to wrap chipboard this is just how I like to do it okay then I want to add some adhesive to the perimeter of my chipboard and I like to use the quarter inch score tape for that. Again, you use what you prefer. Now what we want to do is we want to take out some of the bulk here. Um, and this is just how I like to do my corners. If you have a different way to do it, then go for it. But I like to leave at least an eighth of an inch. You can um, use your little ruler here and put it on there and draw a little pencil line and then trim it off. Or you can just eyeball it. If you do get it too close, you can just use your little black Sharpie and kind of fill it in. Um, believe me, I've done that before. But you just want to trim it off at an angle better to leave too much than not enough she can't glue it back on but again I decided that's why the Sharpie was invented okay I like to start with the long sides first and I'm going to take the backing off of here and the backing off of my chipboard and fold it over And then I'm going to flip it around and do the opposite edge. Again, I like to do the long sides first, but you do it how you like if you've wrapped chipboard before. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to fold over the sides. Now we've got these little corners here, and I just like to take my bone folder and just tuck them in like this and then take the backing off and fold it over. Just like that. So we have a nice little corner. And we'll do the same to the other side. So there we go. We got our chipboard wrapped. It goes pretty fast. And the nice thing about it is we didn't have to piece anything. Now I like to take my bone folder and just kind of set it in there just to find the edges where my chipboard is and just fold it up. So this folio has two little page units in it. So we're going to make a hinge 
and do that next. Now, to make the hinge, um, I have a tutorial already showing you how to do this, but I'm just gonna walk you through the size of what I did um, and the score marks really quick. So for the hinge piece, your cardstock needs to measure five and a half by five and three quarters. Now our pages are gonna be six inches and I like to make my hinge a quarter inch smaller just so I know I don't have to angle any corners and I know it's gonna fit really nice. So, with the five and a half inches across the top and the five and three quarters going down, your first score mark is going to be at one and a half. So we have one and a half. We're going to move over to the two inch line and score and then two and a half. Now I left three eighths of an inch between my two hinges because we only need two hinges because we only have two pages. So again, one and a half, two, two and a half. Then we're going to move over three eighths of an inch which would be two and seven eighths and then back to the half inch mark which would be three and three eighths and then the next half inch mark which would be three and seven eighths and that should leave us um, um, pretty short of an equal distance right here okay. so then what you want to do is you're going to take your hinge and you're going to flip it over and you're going to go ahead and add score tape to one of the hinges. And it's kind of hard to see on black. I apologize. I like to fold on my hinge score lines just so I know which two pieces are going to go together. Just kind of so I can see it since I'm doing black. So again, you don't want to put it on the score line, but I like to use a 3 eighths of an inch tape. And we're going to put one here. So we skip the first channel, we add tape, we skip the second channel, skip the second channel, or the third channel, or the fourth channel, and then do one in the last. So we don't put tape on our gusset. So again, I'm gonna burnish my... Score line. And go ahead and fold this over. I like to stand my hinge up and rock it back and forth. And there we have it, two little hinges for our two pages that we're going to make. So it should look like this. Then what you want to do is we need to add adhesive to the back. And then we're going to add this piece to our, so we're going to center it on our spine, left to right, top to bottom, okay? So we're going to add adhesive to the back here. And then we're also, before I stick it in my book, I like to add my score tape to the um, hinges on both sides. So it should look like this. So I went ahead and made another one here really quick. I added my tape to the back. Again, I've covered the complete back because it's gonna keep my pages in. And then on my hinges, I used the quarter inch score tape. Now granted, this is a half an inch hinge, but I like to use a quarter inch tape because I like to put my tape along the top edge of my hinge, which is the folded edge on both sides. The reason why is when I go to put my pages on, I don't want to put my pages all the way down. I just want to leave about an eighth of an inch there. That way the pages will fold a lot easier. So again, I've got adhesive all over here. I've got a uh, score tape on both sides of my hinges, close to the top edge, not the bottom. And we're going to add that to our book. So tape the back. Take the backing off the tape. Okay, so again, I'm gonna center this on my spine piece. I have a wingspan on both sides of at least one and a half inches. And we're gonna center it left to right and top to bottom. Now you could sit it down here before you took the backing off and use a pencil and mark it, but yeah, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Just like that. And we're going to take our bone folder and burnish our tape down. Okay. okay, just go ahead and burnish it really good and work your hinges back and forth. Now we need to find our score lines again. So I'm going to take my bone folder and just press it in there as I fold my paint, my book cover up, flip around and do the other side. Okay. 
Again, you want to be gentle. You don't want to tear your cardstock. So there you go. That's the cover of our cute little folio book. Adorable. Such a cute little book. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our two pages. We're going to go inside here. So you're going to grab your scoreboard again. And you're going to get whatever color of cardstock you want for your pages. I'm using black, obviously, and I apologize. I usually don't use black, but I am going to decorate this. So, okay, so for each page, you will need a piece of cardstock that measures 12 inches by eight and a half inches. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to put it in here with the 12 inches of going across the top. And we're going to, our first score mark is going to be at six inches. Okay. Rotate it a quarter turn. The eight and a half is across the top, and we're going to score at four and a quarter. So again, we basically scored our cardstock in half, vertically and horizontally. So we're going to do the same thing to the next one. So you only need two, pe two pieces of cardstock because we're only going to do two pages, even though it's going to look like eight. Or six. Okay. So again, we scored it six inches along the 12 inch side. We've rotated it a quarter turn and we have scored it at four and a quarter. So we're done with our scoreboard for now. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our paper. And what we want to do is with it facing this way, we've got the 12 inches across the top, we're going to cut on that 6 inch score line all the way up right to where and stop where they intersect. Okay, You can use your scissor or your paper trimmer if you want. I'm just going to use my scissors this time. So we're just going to do that to the first one. We're going to do the same thing to the second piece. Again, we have a 12 inches is here and this is our 6 inch score line. We're going to cut from the bottom up and stop where they intersect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and fold on our score lines. So we're going to fold this back on itself. So it's like this. And we have the folded piece at the top. We have the open edge here where we cut. And then we're going to take this one. I'm going to fold this side in, and we're going to fold this one back. Give it a good burnish with your bone folder. Kind of square everything up because this is Recollections cardstock, and sometimes it's not very square, if you know what I mean. So there we go. We have the folded edge at the top. So there's our page. It's going to open like this. Then we're going to have a page here with a side pocket, and this is what's going to fit on our hinge, and then we have a back one. So let's go ahead and fold the other one. Again, we're going to fold it in half first along the score line that we trimmed. And then we've got the folded edge at the top. We're going to take the first flap on top and fold it over. take this one and fold it back. Okay, so those are our two pages. Now what we want to do is we want to add, in the original design I had created a little flap on this front page. And then what we need to do is with our page, we need to seal up this bottom here. So when you trim your cardstock to eight and a half by 12, you will have a strip that's three and a half inches by 12 left. And using that strip, you can get your, your flap. It's gonna flap here and you can get the piece for the pocket. Okay, so I'll give you those measurements right now. So the piece that we're going to use for our pocket is going to measure five and a quarter by three and a half, because we've taken that three and a half inch piece, we've trimmed it down. And then on that piece, we're gonna score with the five and a quarter across the top. We're gonna score at a half an inch on both sides, okay? Half an inch. 
Then you're going to take it and rotate it so the three and a half is across the top, and you're going to score directly in half at one and three quarters. Okay, so again, we're going to have two of those because we have two pages. So we're going to need two pieces that measure three and a half by five and a quarter. We're scoring at a half an inch on both ends, rotating it to the three and a half inch side, and we're going to score one and three quarters. Then what we're going to do, we're going to do that to both of them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it, we're going to fold on our score lines, fold it this way, and fold it this way. Then we're going to add our score tape. We folded our hinges in, we're going to add our score tape to our tabs. And then we're going to take our little scissors here. This is just how I like to do it. With some folded, and we're going to make a V cut out of the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and angle these little ones here. not really necessary to do this part because we are going to cover it with design paper. So there we go. And again, you're going to need two of those. Those are going to be the pocket page, the pockets to cover up that bottom. And I'll show you how we're going to add those in a second. Now to make the flap for the front page only, we're going to need two pieces. And those are going to measure five and a quarter by three and a half. Again, you can get all these pieces out of that three and a half by 12 strip that you cut off of those two pieces of paper. So what you're going to do is you're going to put this in here, five and a quarter, you have two of them, you're going to score it a half an inch. There's the first one, and there is the second one, score it at one half an inch. Okay, so we're going to fold on our score line. And we're going to add our tape to the back of the flap right here. And I went ahead and did that. And I went ahead and um, decided I wanted to do a decorative edge on the bottom of my um, flaps. So I just used this little corner here and added a decorative corner. So we've added our score tape. We're going to go ahead now and fold our tabs back. And we need two of those because we have two pages. Okay, so I have two of these flaps and I have two of these pockets. Now let's go ahead and make our page complete. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add our flap. Now let's add our pocket to close this bottom up. Okay, so we have the folded edge here and then we have these two pieces that are together. And this is the edge that we want to trim out. We want to close up. For some reason, my is pretty crooked. Let's fix that. Okay, so I'm gonna, the way I like to do this, I'm going to take this piece right here, I'm going to fold in my tabs, I'm going to close this up. This is, again, the bottom piece. Here's my section that's got the fold at the top, and we're just going to put this right on the bottom here like this to make our pocket, okay? So we have our page, we're going to have a pocket, that's going to close up the bottom, flip it over, and we're going to have a pocket here. And then this is our another page and then the back. And then we will have this large pocket right here as well. Okay. <clears throat> so the way I like to do it is take those flaps out of the way <coughs> and I take my paper and I line it up. Like this. Hold it in place. <coughs> Excuse me. And pull the tape backing off of one side. Fold it up, stick it down, flip it over, and do the other side. So now we have our little page. And then um, there's a little more bulk here, so go back and just reinforce your score line. We have right there, we have right here. And there we go. Okay, so we have our pocket here. We have our pocket on the side. We have our pocket back here. Now we're going to add our flap to this first section. Now with that little opening on the left, we're going to add the flap to the top section. And I just centered it left to right 
and added it right to the top. So I had an even space pretty much all the way around. This one's pretty simple. You just take the tape backing off. There's no need to trim the corners unless you just absolutely want to. And again, I like to open it up so I can have a flatter surface. And try not to get my head in the camera. And I'm gonna stick it down. There we go. So there we have it. We have our flap. We turn the page. We have a space right here. We have a pocket right here and another pocket here and a pocket inside and then there's the back. Okay. So let's make the other one just like that. So we're going to close up the pocket first along the bottom, this bottom edge here. Again, I like to take this and uh, line it up like this. You don't want to go over your score line or it's not going to want to fold really good. Hold it in place and then open it up. Pull the tape off. over and do the other side. Okay, and give it a good burnish. Oopsie. And there's our second page. Now we're just going to add our flap like we did the last time. Take the tape backing off. <clears throat> center it from the left to the right and you're going to attach this right along the top edge. There we go. Give it a good burnish. And there we have it. We have our flap here, our page, our pocket, our pocket, our big pocket, and the other page. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add these to our book. What I normally like to do is I like to decorate all of my pa my pages before I stick them in the book. And that's it. So what we're going to do is this is what you're going to do once you get everything decorated. And what I did in the um, in the typography one is I made this a design element and then I used an ivory cardstock to put on the back side of this. And these little mats are cut at three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Right there. So you'll need two of those. And then for the photo mats to go on the inside of the pockets, you're going to need two of these. And these are going to measure four by five and three quarters. And those are going to go on the inside right here. Okay, right in there. And then for these pockets, I went ahead and made photo mats that are three and a quarter by three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And again, I just used um, ivory cardstock. So you'll need one, two, four of these. And these are going to be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I did design paper on one side and I did ivory on the other. And the ivory is going to measure three by four. And you can round the corners to match the corner that you used here, which would be really super cute, which is what I think I'm going to do. And then there you go. You're all set. Then when you get your pages all decorated, you'll go ahead and start with the back. Pull the backing off and you're going to stick that right on the hinge. Don't go all the way down and you're going to give it a good press. And then you're going to go ahead and pull the tape backing off of this one. Take your next page, put it on there. Again, we're not going to go all the way down because we want to make our pages turn really nice and line it up with the page behind it. Press it down. And there's your book. 
cute little sides great quick little gift so there you have it everybody that's how i made the pages in my typography mini wallet folio style book there you go everybody so here's my finished folio i went ahead and added the design paper using the graphic 45 winter wonderland um, I used only the papers with the exception of this one little sticker right here on the front cover. Uh, I had some stamps, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but I did go ahead and use some clear wink Estella on the berries and um, the bird and the poinsettias and stuff like that. And there's the spine, and here's the back. And then I used one of the cutouts from the paper collection to put on the back here just to put a date, which I thought would be really cute. A couple more stamps here. I popped this one up on foam tape, and this is a 3 by 4 card that I did trim down a little bit. and. Uh, Put it on some foam tape as well. So you open it up, and then again on the inside, I just used one of the cutouts and made a pocket. And then I have three little tags here. These are again from the paper collection, the page of uh, had the stamps and the cutouts and stuff. This is another one as well. I put it on the front of the flap here, and I did use this. Uh, I know it's kind of it's retired now, but it's a Stampin' Up Triple Punch. It's got this one and this one. I used this side for the black and this for the um, design paper. And there's the ivory paper that I added. And then this is one of the 4x6 cards, and I just trimmed it down so it would fit on this page. And then you flip it over again, some more design paper here, another cute little stamp, some more of the um, border strip paper right here. And then I did make little 3 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter photo mats to go inside the pockets, and they're ivory on the back and design paper here. I love the cute things. And then this is the pocket for the large um, tag. And I went ahead and just left them plain on this side and then ivory back here. So you can put a photo here and journal here. And then I used some extra large eyelets and tied some of this uh, ribbon trim here. And this is actually from Prima. I think it was last year's Prima trim, the glitter. I thought it matched the collection really well. It's sparkly. So over here is another pocket page. Again, another 3 by 4 cutout. Again, another cute little stamp and a border strip. And then this was a part of the cover page, and I just fussy cut around it so I could get this section in here right here. So that's the first page right there. And now on to the second page. Again, another one of those cute little cutouts. It's a cute little reindeer paper here. And then the ivory. And then another border strip. And a cute stamp. And some more of the floral paper. I left this stamp open in case I wanted to slide something underneath there. And again, here's another cute little photo mat, another little strip of border paper. This paper is so pretty. And then there's the tag for this one. Again, some Prima tr glitter trim. And then extra large eyelets. And on the back side here, again, um, this was actually a border strip, and I put the little squirrels on top because I kind of wanted to break up a little bit of the red here with a cute little green. And again, another photo mat. And this was another 4x6 card that I trimmed down to fit on the page. And then on the back here, again, I just added a border strip here with those cute little squirrels again. And then on the back inside cover, I made another pocket. I added a stamp on some dimensional foam tape. This is another 3x4 card that I just left plain on the back. And then here's one of the 4x6 cards that I used a little Tim Holtz paper clip on. Just scored it and folded it in half so you can put two photos there. Just to help keep it closed. And those go back to the last little pocket. And again, there's the back with the cute little label on the back from the paper collection. So there is my completed little wallet mini folio book using the Graphic 45 Winter Wonderland. Thanks for watching. Bye.